cul-de-sac parking. Do you park like spokes on the wagon wheel, along the curb, or in the middle? Discuss. All right, see, we got it parked along the curb, this cul-de-sac. Then we got parking in the middle of the cul-de-sac. This is an example where if you want someone to help you, uh, don't make it hard for them to help you. Put it out backwards. We did put stickers on that one to put it out with the wheels facing the house. They put it backwards and then they want to have this extra box taken out and they put it behind the cart at the furthest reach of the arm. And I know we've sent text messages to this house before. Which is powered by Trash Joe's. Oh, sponsored post. <laughs> Trash Joe's. It's a thing where people sign up online, or they can sign up for service online, and you can also use the text messaging platform to send people text messages. Usually works to get people to comply on how to set garbage out, but as you see, there's an example where, you know, the household got it, but maybe not all the residents in the household got the message. might be a tough one to do with the arm. Have I said something about bagging trash before? I feel like I've got, I'm, I know I've made a video about those. Yikes. I don't know what happened here. Hardy hardy, yes. The one good thing here, we'll try to be looking at the sunny side of things, even though the sun is not out right now. It's all in plastic bags that are tied. What I would ask though is there is a difference in quality of plastic. Um, when you have like those 30 gallon plastic bags and you pull it out of the waste basket and you're like, oh, there's a lot of room in this basket or this trash bag yet. We'll fill it all the way full. And I get that. You want to get the maximum use out of it. But when you fill it all the way full and it's cheap plastic, you have a lot of weight. They don't stretch, they tear. If you're going to want to pack a trash bag all the way full, tie it real tight, at least get the plastic that's got the heavier mill. It's a little more durable. If you're gonna have it all in a trash cart, 
eh, you can get by. You know, maybe, maybe keeping it in that thinner plastic while contained in the trash cart will be sufficient. Because it's just got to survive the one drop into the hopper and get packed to the back. And that'll reduce litter. It's been raining nonstop for maybe three hours now. I keep thinking it's gonna let up. It's gonna let up. I haven't checked the weather. It's just me being optimistic. But if someone's gonna set out extras, this is about as good as it's gonna get. Oh, hold on. Reaching a little far. Oh, that's a nice heavy plastic. And they tied it. Ooh, there's some weight in those things too. So the heavier mill, mill is like the thickness of the plastic. These are almost looking like uh, contractor bags. So when someone's doing a cleanup or a remodel, you can throw a lot of the garbage or debris into a contractor bag, which is built to be a little bit tougher. Uh, and I, the takeaway I want you to see now, you're probably thinking, oh, you're just happy because it makes your job easier. That's true, it does. But there's a there's a benefit for all parties. I'm going to charge this customer less for picking up extra. I'll probably charge him like three bucks. Three bucks to pick up all that extra. I didn't have to get out in the rain and pick up stuff and pick up scraps out of the water or out of the grass. Uh, so the customer I'm hoping is a little happier that it only cost them three bucks because I can appreciate the effort it took to put things in a plastic bag and tie it. I appreciate that. But we did it did take me a little extra time and it did add some weight to our disposal fee at the end of the day. So the extra service, three bucks, I think is reasonable. Uh, so the customer I'm hoping is happy with that deal. I'm happy because I can stay dry. And I reduce the risk of injury uh, by not having to get out of the truck because I've said it before, injuries occur outside of the truck. I'm hoping the community is happy because the community doesn't have extra litter blowing around their yards because their neighbor was responsible and put trash in a bag and it's tied. So the customer, the community, uh, the employee, me, the worker, we're all happy. Now, is the company happy? Happy? I would hope so. You know, I don't own or operate the company, but I do kind of operate on its behalf. So I would hope that the company is happy that they got pretty good compliance from customers as far as how to set trash out. Uh, so is everyone kind of like got a uh, measured interest? that have all been um, appeased to a degree? Sure. Now there's some people that uh, have the mindset where it's like, I should be able to throw whatever I want, wherever I want, and because I pay one fee, I should have unlimited access to the service of having someone get out and clean up all my mess, uh, and no one can tell me what to do. That mindset doesn't really operate on the... Uh, interest of all parties involved I know that's quite a bit of a word salad uh, in short what I'm trying to say just bag and tie your trash just bag and tie it particularly if you're gonna send it outside the cart but we'll give it our best shot fireworks it's a little early to have fireworks already if you're gonna have fireworks what I'd recommend is you don't set them out in the rain Probably should bag them and tie them. And uh, also don't set it out overnight when your sprinklers are scheduled to run. Well, that's not good.
right? Sometimes I'll I'll shoot these to show you something. I'll, I'll be So there's always room for one more. Uh, we start charging for trash outside the cart. Um, be not because we're trying to get rich. Everyone thinks, oh, you're just a uh, you know, nickel and diamond people. It's like, no, we made a pretty significant investment to get an automated truck and carts to go with the automated truck. So we'd like you to put the trash in the cart. And previously. A lot of people would throw trash on the ground with no carts whatsoever and uh, well you and I know that there's companies out there that are too afraid to tell the customers hey there is a better way to do trash and we're gonna uh, the people doing the work are gonna tell you like maybe we'll do the work the way we see it's better uh, some of those companies they don't know how to tell customers uh, there are rules that exist um, that are good for the company and good for the customer community and everyone as a whole. Anyway, so we started charging for instances like that because the trash will fit. It's just people get out there and be like, eh, yeah, I don't know how to get this to fit, so I'll just throw it on the ground. They'll pick it up. It's like, okay, we'll pick it up. But if I have to finish putting trash away for you, I'm going to charge for it. I don't like it. I know it's not a popular opinion, but it's the one thing that gets people to start putting trash in the cart. Because you can ask nicely so many times and people just won't listen. If they see a charge on their account, then they go, oh yeah, trash is supposed to be in the cart. When it's raining, I like to leave the lids closed and I don't know what that note says. I think that's a note that says, um, I forget what it is, but a lot of these carts will have a factory stamp. You see how hard I, get, I can't get the lid to shut? Yeah, I can. Ugh. Ugh. a bigger disaster than I thought. All right, so sideways or backwards, that was, that was pretty awful. I was trying to demonstrate it's hard to keep the lid closed in the rain when they're sideways or backwards. And then we have a cart over here that's correctly placed. Wheels to the house, hinges to the house. Uh, that sticker says to leave space between carts or obstacles. Now this truck, if you go full speed, by default will leave the lid open, but if you just go a little slower coming off the top, you can get the lids to stay shut. By default, I'll leave lids open so I know they're serviced and someone watching from the house will know they're serviced, but when it's raining like today, I'll leave them shut. Alright, here's another example, it's set out sideways. But you might like the way it swings, you kind of have to, yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't uh, close the way you'd like. And then we'll go around the corner, there'll be one that's placed correctly. And since it's raining, I like to leave these lids shut. go a little slower the lid will stay closed slips trips and falls is that the first time you've heard of slips trips and falls that expression if you work blue collar jobs every meeting they seem to talk about slips trips and falls and you can really reduce them if you have a machine doing the work 
If I was right in the back of the truck, which I have done before, uh, jumping on and off the back of a truck when it's raining like this, high chance of slips, trips, and falls. And the reason why companies talk about slips, trips, and falls so much is because they're really expensive. You got guys falling down, uh, spraining and breaking stuff while wearing the company uniform on the company clock. Uh, they got to pay for it. They prefer not to. So if you can mitigate that, yeah, something like this automated truck seems expensive up front, but if you eliminate all the future injuries of someone on the back of a truck, all of a sudden it starts to look a little more cost effective. You know, and then you got guys that will, you know, maybe they don't slip, trip, or fall, but they can fake it and um, kind of get a payout. I've seen that happen. Eh, maybe not seen it happen. I've definitely heard of it happening. <clears throat> I could have pulled that off myself. Fell off a cardboard baler once. Rang my head against a, uh, like a 4x4 four four piece of steel. Made a nice little thong sound. It's a big cardboard baler. Uh, lots of posts and framing. Uh, walking over a bale to get around all the apparatus. Fell over. Uh, walked over to the office and be like, yeah, I kind of took a spill. You know. And I had a, like, it looked like a half of a golf ball knot on my head. And the service manager at the time was acting as sort of the operations manager because they're in between guys. Uh, they're looking for ops manager. So he was the service and ops guy for a little bit. And his eyes got real big, huge. Because he saw that knot on my head. And I think his immediate thought was, this guy could walk into a doctor's office right now and totally say he got concussed. And it's going to cost a lot of money. Now, I didn't grow up that way. I, I didn't have the mindset of, uh, hey, hey, how can I exploit this for my own maximum financial benefit? And I've taken lumps before. You know, I've fallen off farm equipment. I played some football in high school. You know, I've done some stuff where I've had my HUD rung before. Little concussions. Had a little scooter accident in PE class. Ran my head against the wall. It's a little damaged, maybe. So I looked at the guy and I'm like, no, I'm fine. You know, I've been hit in the head before. This is fine. Um, so I, I was able to soothe him a little bit. He was a good dude. I got along with him. So I didn't want him to be worried. But there's certainly some guys out there that would be like, oh yeah, this is a payday. I'm making money. Uh, what was I saying? Back to the point. Back to the original point. Um, if I was riding in the back of the truck right now, Monday morning, maybe I had a long weekend, maybe I had a fight with the wife, and I was grumpy. It's like, you know what? I think I'm going to fall down today. Yep, I'm going to take a spill. Maybe hurt something, break something, go to the hospital, get some dry clothes on, and get some workers comp. Those guys exist. They are out there, and companies do not want to have them on payroll. Something to think about when you see these automated trucks. A lot of people don't like them because they're like, oh, it takes away a job. That well, takes away a bad job. Because not too often do you see the guys riding in the back of the truck getting paid a living wage. Because you and I both know there's companies out there that hire guys to ride the back and they pay them absolutely not what they're worth. And I consider it exploitive. And if they're not making living wage and they don't have benefits, I think that's kind of irresponsible on the company's behalf. I always recommend if you set out personal carts and your garbage company allows you to set those out, take the lid off for the day of service. The ones we provide have a hinge on them so you can tip it and the lid stays attached. If I service this one as is, 
the lid's going to go in the hopper. And a lot of people don't like that. I'll get a little bit of time to take the lid off. But uh, we do charge for the extra service because we are picking up more weight and we are getting a little bit more time to have service. So we charge three bucks, or at least I do. Uh, I'll mark it as three dollars to charge that extra card. But at the same time, if you're regularly going to have extra trash, extra like eight bucks a month, you can get another one of our cards. So you double the capacity for an additional eight dollars. Not sure what happened there. Those are not my cans, though. So.